going to preach a message, and if you want to put a title to this message, let's call it Wait on It. Wait on it. And if you want to, maybe we can open the Bibles to the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 4. Acts, chapter 1, verse 4. And when you guys are there, you guys can say, La tengo, or I got it. You know, that means I got it in Spanish. The Word of God reads, it says, one, On one occasion, when he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait. Say, wait. Wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. Let's pray. Father in heaven, God, we come before your presence this morning, God, and we thank you, God, that we're able to come into your house to get encouraged, God. We can come into your house to hear your word, God, and we pray, God, that this morning that every single person that is here, God, able, master, to leave this place different, change, transform, empower, God, to continue to do what you called us to do. Father, we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, for the precious ministry of your Holy Spirit, that it will have liberty and freedom to move in the hearts of your people this morning. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray. It. Amen. Amen. Wait on it. How many of us know one of the hardest things for us to do is to wait? I mean, to wait for those things that always come late. To wait on God for those things that he has promised us. Has God has given you promises for your life, church? How does God has given you promises for your family, for your children? Has God has shown you visions and small pictures of your future, future, how God is going to use your life and how God is going to move in your life and how God is going to use you in the future? You know, and the thing is that we get excited about those promises and we get excited about the visions and we can't wait to see those things come to pass. We can stay still. We just want to get there now. And we want everything that God has promised us. We want it right away. Can I get a witness here this morning? I mean, we want to get in a car and we want to get in an airplane and we want to get there right away. But how many of us know that it doesn't work like that, church? You know, that I have learned and through the leadership, the models that we are able to see before us, that before they got to the promised land, sometimes they need to go through the desert. That before they get to the promised land, first they have to go through the potter's house. That before you get to the promised land, first you got to go to the garden of God's enemy where you say, God, not my will, but your will be done. There is a season where God has placed us and God has given us promises and visions for your life. Personal promises, personal visions. But all of a sudden, God puts us in a place of waiting. It will be so easy for us to read the word of God and, and will, God will give you promises and you can wake up the next day and you're already there. See, but there is some things that God wants to do in the desert. There is some things that God wants to do in the powder's house. There is some things that God wants to do. Listen, there in the garden of Gethsemane. There is a promised land and there is a vision that God has given to you. But there is some things that God wants to do in your life before he can, he can get you to the place that he promised you. See, God has given you promises, and God will give you visions, and God will show you some things for your life and your family. And then he puts us in a season of waiting. A season where we feel like nothing is happening inside. Like nothing is happening around us. And we feel like God forgot about us. We feel like God dropped some promises on us, and God dropped some visions on us, and he left us all but ourselves. I heard this story about this pilot that he was driving the, you know, flying the airplane and all of a sudden he heard a, 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 the engine blow up and, he, and the next engine blow up again and, and you know, the pilot, start, start, he started to panic. And all of a sudden he got up and he went and he grabbed the, what is it called? The, the, yeah, he grabbed that. I don't want to say it wrong. You might, you know, my accent kicks in. So, but he grabbed that thing, you know, and and he put it on, and he got up from his seat, and he began to walk, and he looked at the passengers and said, listen, I'm just going to go down there to get some help for us. 
my God. And sometimes we feel like God left us in a waiting season and we feel like he jumped out of the airplane. He led us by ourselves to fly this plane alone. Have you ever felt like that? Sometimes we feel like God left us to fly this airplane alone. But I want to let you know, church, this morning that God didn't forget about you. He didn't forget about his promises. He didn't forget about what he has shown you. He just wants to do something special in your life. And he puts you in a waiting season for your life. We need to understand why that he has us in a waiting season. It's important, church, to understand why sometimes God will put us in a waiting season. See, the thing is that God is putting us in a waiting season because he wants to take you deeper, church. He wants to take you deeper. He wants to take you deeper with him because he wants to do something in your life. He wants to prepare you for the promises that he has promised for your life, for your family, for your children. He wants to empower you for your destination. He didn't forget about you, church. He's taking you deeper, but also in this season of waiting, not only God will put us in a season of waiting to take us deeper, but also God has us in a waiting season to build you bigger. To build you bigger. He's taking you deeper, but also he has you in a waiting season because he wants to build you bigger. He wants to build you bigger because he has big things for your life. And he wants to use you to do greater things. He wants to use you in a bigger way. And sometimes when we come into the things of God and the promises are given to us, we get excited. We're like, man, God is going to use me in a powerful way. But sometimes, you know, his plans are bigger than our plans. And his way are higher than our plans. And all of a sudden, he will have you in a waiting season. And all of a sudden, in that waiting season, he's taking you deeper. And he's building you bigger. Now that vision that he has given you, you think it was only just for you. But there is something bigger than yourself. God is building something bigger than for you. Church, did you hear me this morning? There's something that happens in the waiting season. Something happens. You come into the things of God and, and then you have a little box and, and you're like, man, this is what God has for my life. And, and God wants to do this in my life. And all of a sudden, God will give you a promise and God will give you a vision. And he puts you in a waiting season and he's taking you deeper and he's building you bigger. That plan, that little box, it turns into this big old box. And all of a sudden, we come into the things of God and your vision is growing. Your promises are growing. They're becoming more reality for you oh, and I. Sometimes the reason that we're in a waiting season is because God wants to take you deeper and he wants to build you bigger. See, in the opening scripture in Acts 1 and 4, we see the disciples sitting, Jesus sitting with the disciples. He gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. Here we see that Jesus telling the disciples to wait on the gift the Father promised them. See, the disciples for three years were always on the move. See, from time to time, the moment they left their occupations and followed Jesus, every single day for those three years were always on the move. They will walk from one village to another village. They will go from this place to another place. They will get in, they will get in boats and travel to other places. They would never... Standing still. They were always on the move. They go from this village to this village. They walk, they run, they will get in bowls, and they were always on the move. They were being discipled. They were being exposed to miracles, signs, and wonders. There always something happening each day within those three years that they spent with Jesus. But now Jesus commanded them to wait. And this waiting season for the disciples, it turned out to become the best time for their lives. During this time, the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, 
Then all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. See, I have learned that in this downtime or this waiting season can become the best time for you and I. The disciples during this waiting season, God took them deeper and he built them bigger. During this downtime, he empowered them and he took them deeper and he put the Holy Spirit inside of them. Something happened inside of their lives during this waiting season. During this time, they went deeper and also they got bigger. See, King David was not developed as a king in the shepherd's field, but he was developed as a king in the cave of Andula. In a waiting season. In the cave of Andula, it was David learned dependency on God. It was in the cave hiding and waiting when he learned to trust in God. It was in the cave where he learned to wait on the Lord for provision and deliverance. See, the thing about David, God, David, he, he knew God as the God of the shepherd field. He knew the God who was able to give supernatural abilities to kill bears, lions, and a giant. Oh, but in the cave, in a waiting season in his life, David was going to know God as the one who encourages. He was going to know God as the one who delivers. He was going to know God as the one who provides. He was going to know God as the one who's in control. After the cave, after this waiting season, David's life, David not only knew God as the God of the shepherd's field, but now also God knew, David knew God as the one, the God of the battlefield. In the waiting season, God will take us deeper and he will build us bigger. I'm grateful for the waiting season. I'm grateful for the waiting seasons. I'm grateful that God gives us promises to encourage us to keep pushing he gives you words and he gives you promises to let you know that you are in his perfect will. He gives you visions and show you things and how he's going to use you just to continue to motivate you, to continue to push forward, to continue to walk even when you feel like giving up. But it's in that waiting season when God begins to show himself mighty in your life. See, in the churches, we always have two kinds of people. We have those people that believe in little gods and those people that believe in big gods. It's because there are some people that they, when they're standing still, when they feel like nothing's happening, in that moment, they continue to press through. And all of a sudden, guess God begins to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Sometimes we walk and we know that God has saved us. We know that God who can able to do some things in our lives and move in our lives, provide. All of a sudden, in the waiting season, there is things and sometimes we don't understand. Oh, but as we continue to press through, oh, the God that we knew, the one that saved us, now it becomes a God is able to provide. Now all of a sudden you don't quote Abraham that God is my provider, but now you can say with conviction, God provided in this time in my life. Now God is not just the God of Abraham, but he's the God of my life. In the waiting season, it's a beautiful place because it's a place where we can rearrange, rearrange our priorities. It's in the waiting season. It's where God begins to rearrange your priorities. See, God will give you the promise to you the next day. What would have happened to us? If God would have, imagine if David, he was anointed king. But God said, David, you're going to go back to the shepherd's field. He wouldn't be able to fulfill the role of a king the next day after he got anointed. What would have happened in some of the promises that God would give him to you? Will you still come to church? If God will bless you with the things that you're praying and you're believing for right now, what would have happened? How was our priorities? It's in the waiting season where God will test our faith. Can we trust God in the waiting season? It's in the waiting season where God will purify our motives. Purify our motives. 
when you're thinking that it's all about me, myself, and I. God bless me. God, God bless me. God do this for me. All of a sudden in the waiting season because you went deeper and God made you bigger. Now there's more people involved in the promises that God has given you. Now it's not just about you, but God, you want God help me to grow so I can be a blessing to others. In the waiting season, God also in, will increase our gratitude. I'm grateful, man, for the waiting season. In the waiting season is that God will remind us that he is God and that we're not. He reminds us that he is in control. Hello. He is in control. Sometimes, you know, man, we feel like, man, we can get things done in our own. But God will show you that I'm God and I have you where I want to. And there is some things that I need to do in your life. So you just got to surrender your will to my will. How many of us know that it's hard to wait? It's hard to wait. But do you know that we spend most of our lives waiting anyways? I mean, some of us would rather do anything than wait. Some of us would rather do the wrong thing than wait. Hello. My God. I, I know who I'm speaking to this morning, man. <laughs> for real, God gave me that one for the somewhat here. No, I'm just for <laughs> But most of our lives is waiting. For example, we wait for appointments to see the doctor. We wait for red lights to turn green, waiting in lines, waiting for people to text you back, hello, waiting on the phone call after they put us on hold, waiting for the job to, that you applied to call you back, waiting to see the bank it will give, you a, give us a long, loan, waiting for the right time to start a family, waiting for the, your, your, for the loved ones to come to Christ, waiting for the Lord to bring you the right man or the right woman of God. Hello. Waiting for your prayers to be answered. Yes. Waiting for your husband to come home because you cannot be without him. Hello. <laughs> waiting, waiting. We need to understand that the journey is as important as your destination. Sometimes we just want to get there. Sometimes we just want to get there. If I can just get there, things are going to change. If this would happen, things will be different. But we need to understand that God has us in a journey. And the journey is as important as your destination. <clears throat> it's not just a, to inherit the car of your dad. But it's about you paying the price to buy the car you want. Amen. It's so easy for God just to give us something. But God wants to help you and empower you so you're able to stand tall and continue to prosper after he blesses you with the promises. So in this season of waiting, God wants to take us deeper and also God wants to build us bigger. How many of us know that in waiting season, sometimes we feel bigger? I know sometimes people, you know, waiting seasons can be horrible for us. We get. But in the waiting season, we get bigger. God is doing something in our lives. I've learned in my waiting season, I had many questions. Many questions, I'm not understanding what's happening. But during that time, God was teaching me some things and growing my mentality, growing my capacity and stretching me. He's making me bigger. But also I believe that in the waiting season, we know that God wants to take us deeper and he wants to build us bigger. But there we got to be careful not to do some things in the waiting season. Number one, I believe that in this waiting season, if we're not careful, there is things that we will do that will hold us back. It will hurt us and it will delay 
the promises and the visions for your life. Number one is that you cannot help God when things are taking forever. We cannot help God when things are taking a while to come. You cannot help God when God is taking forever while you wait. See, this is a problem, a mistake that Abraham made. See, God promised him a son. Because from the son, God was going to come, what was going to come, the, the nation of Israel. But Abraham got tired of waiting. How many of us sometimes we get tired of waiting? You know, Abraham waited for 25 years. 25 years waiting. You know, in Genesis chapter 16, verse 1 to 5, I'm going to read some verses here. The Bible says that Sarah, Abraham's wife, had not yet produced a child. She had an Egyptian maid named Hagar. Sarah said to Abraham, God has not seemed fit to let me have a child. Asleep, asleep with my maid. Maybe I can get a family from her. Abraham agreed. Hello. <laughs> Obedient. My God, this guy. Abraham agreed to what she said. Abraham's wife so took her Egyptian maid, Agar, Hagar, and gave her to her husband Abraham as a wife. My God. Abraham had been li living 10 years in Canaan when, he took, when this took place. He slept with Agar, and she got pregnant. When Hagar learned she was pregnant, she looked down on her mistress. Sarah told Abraham, it's all your fault. My God. How many of us know sometimes... <laughs> <laughs> See the thing is that when we try to help God in our waiting season All of a sudden problems are starting to happen See problems started with Abraham and Sarah All of a sudden problems She started blaming Abraham It's her fault She was the one that Problems She began to get jealous See, what happens is that sometimes when we help God, waiting and waiting for God, and when he doesn't come, we try to put our hands in the mix. And if I can just do this, things will go faster. I want to, when God wants us in the slow lane, but we want to find our way to the fast track. Sometimes trying to get to the fast track, there was some crash that would happen. You know what happened through that? It was this son named Ishmael. Out of Abraham and Sarah trying to help God. And guy by the name of Ishmael was a product of them helping God. You know what happened, Ishmael? Ishmael, he will, even God said it, you're going to be always against Isaac. The promise, the promise. Sometimes if we're not careful, we try to help God. Ishmael's will rise and they will become enemies of the very thing that God promised you. Ishmael's will rise and they will go against the vision that God has promised you. How many Ishmael's are we dealing with in our lives right now? Because you try to help God along the way. What Ishmael's are you fighting? What Ishmael's are coming against the promises that God has promised you? What Ishmael's has, has come against the vision that God has promised you? We cannot help God. Sometimes our, our impatience not only will affect our lives, but also it will affect the people around us. See, Israel is being in battle, in war against the descendants of Ishmael till now. Number two, not only we can I help God in this waiting season, but also we got to be careful not to get ahead of the time of God while we're waiting. The Bible says that there is time for everything. That there is time for everything. We can learn from Moses. Moses got ahead of the time of God. He had a calling upon his life, and his calling was to deliver the nation of Israel from Egypt. But it was this time where the Bible says in Exodus chapter 2, 
It was the story where, where, where Moses, he, he, he was grown, and he went to his brother, and he looked at, a, at their burdens, and he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his brothers. So he looked this way, he looked that way, and when he saw no one, he killed that Egyptian and hid him in the, him in the sand. You know, his calling, it was to deliver God's people. But in that moment, it was not his time yet. His calling was going to to protect God's people. But it was a time for everything. Moses, he took, you know, because of his emotions, took over. His anger rose and he killed an Egyptian. And due to this thing, situation, what happened, his emotions got the best of him. And what happened with Moses, he needed to run to the desert, to Midian. And you know that he lived in the desert for 40 years? My God, 40 years living a regular life. Step out of the perfect will of God. Sometimes it happens when we step ahead of the time of God and we try to get ahead. Sometimes those things are going to happen. The promises and the visions would not only be delayed, but they will be in hold. Moses living a regular life. He got married. He became a shepherd. And you know that, the, that Moses, Moses, not only he lived 40 years living a le- regular life, but also he spent 40 years in the desert doing the will of God. For 80 years in the desert, my God. I'd rather do 40, man, but why am I going to do 80? If just because I stay put and wait for the Lord. We got to be careful not to get ahead of the time of God. And the last thing this morning, as the worship make their way, I think it's important for us that in this waiting season, we need to be careful not to rebel or disobey it. We look at Samuel. We look in Samuel, you know, 1 Samuel chapter 13, we see Saul, King Saul. The Bible says in chapter 13, verse 8 to 14, it says, When he waited seven days according to the time set by Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were discarded from him. So Saul said, Bring a burnt offering and peace offering here to me. And he offered the burnt offering. Now it happened. As soon as he has finished presenting the burnt offering, the Samuel came and so went out to meet him that he might, might greet him. And Samuel the prophet said, what have you done? You know, Saul said, man, when I saw the people were scattered for, scattered for me and that you did not come within the days appointed. And then the Philistines gathered together in meat mash. Then I said, the Philistines will now come down at me on Gilgal, and I have not made supplications to the Lord. Therefore, I felt compelled and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commitments of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord will have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom should not continue. We got to be careful that in this waiting season, let's not rebel or disobey God. See, King Saul, he got tired of waiting, church. He got tired of waiting for the prophet Samuel. And then what happened that he offered a sacrifice to God, a burnt offering to God. See, only the priests and the prophets can offer sacrifice to God in the Old Testament. Saul was not willing to wait for seven days. The Bible says that now it happens. And as soon as he has finished presenting the burnt offering, Samuel came. My God, if Saul, King Saul, if it would have just waited for another hour, if it would have just waited, man, for a little longer, the prophet Samuel was going to come and burn that part offering unto God. But he couldn't wait, and he disobeyed and rebelled against God. Some of us might say, well, it's just a little thing. No, no, it's a big thing. 
it's a little thing. Well, like this guy, he felt afraid. And so he burned an offering and he went and prayed, asked supplications unto the Lord. He went to pray and asked God for help. See, but sometimes in those waiting seasons, God is not waiting to see what you're able to do on your own, but he's looking at your obedience. Sometimes we got to understand that sometimes cannot reveal to us what he's doing in secret until we're able to obey what he has revealed to you already. You know what happened to this situation? Not only David suffered from his disobedience, but the Bible says that in this moment, it says, you know, the kingdom, the staff is not going to be yours no more. Somebody else is going to become a king because of your disobedience. You know, sometimes when, when, when we disobey in a waiting season, not it only hurt us, it, it hurts other people. Our descendants, things that were entrusted to us, now God is entrusting to somebody else. He said, David, he said, you know what, Saul, your son had opportunity to become a king one day because you're a king. Your lineage, your descendants are going to become kings because you're a king. But because you're disobedient in the waiting season, because of your impatience, you couldn't wait upon the Lord. Now what happens, somebody else is going to be king and your son is going to become only the best friend of the new king. I don't know about you, church. I want everything that God has in store for my life. I want everything that God has in store for my family. I want everything that God has in store for my children. And if I have to wait upon the Lord, I'm going to stay put and wait upon the Lord. Why? Because God is faithful and he's always on time when it feels like, no, like taking forever. But I want to let you know that your obedience is better than sacrifice. Your obedience is better than sacrifice. Sometimes God is doing something in private, in secret, and you might not see it, but I want to let you know that God is always working things out. God is preparing your future. He's the beginning and the end. And he's the God of that between, my brother. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. I don't know about you, but I don't want my children to be disqualified because of my disobedience. It's heavy. Because you know, God is good. God gave Jonathan a good heart to love the new king. But can you imagine if he would have just waited? What would it have happened? It's the test of time, church. The test of time. The Bible says that during this waiting season, he doesn't tempt us. But he's testing us. He's testing you, church. He's testing you, my brother. He's testing you, my sister. Maybe, God, you feel like God is taking for how long. But God is doing something. He's taking you deeper. He doesn't want you to pull back. But he wants you to go deeper with him. He wants to take you deeper. He wants to show you some new things for your life. And he wants to make you bigger. God wants to test. See, God would allow certain situations in our lives to see our reaction, to, to see how long we can wait, to see how, what comes out of your mouth, and to see your attitude. You know, how, how many of us know the waiting season? Sometimes, like, we turn into I don't know who. Sometimes we forget who we are. In the waiting season, man, we, we, you know, we get attitudes. All of a sudden, we didn't even know that we were dealing with that. We become negative. Talk about this and talk about God. And see, God is testing, waiting to see what, what is going to be your reaction. Are you still going to be able to follow? Are you still going to be able to be faithful? Are you still going to be able to, to give even when you feel like, man, nothing, I, I, I don't have anything to give. But God is waiting to see your reaction. Are you going to be able to react? Or are you going to respond? waiting to see what's going to come out of your mouth. Man, I had, I had said many crazy things in the waiting season. You know that in the end of the day, after me saying those things, 
the Holy Spirit will come and he will be like, man, is this this man's season or is my season? Is it God? Is it, is it man putting you through this or is it me? You got to remember that there is something happening in your life. I said things that, man, God, God forgive me. I know sometimes in those seasons we tend to say things because of our emotions, what we're going through. But God is testing you, church, to see what is going to come out of your mouth. So he wants to see your reaction. Oh, no, but sometimes, sometimes you need, to, you need some negative potential in, in your experience to take you farther that you will go on your own. Sometimes the negative things will happen. Is because God needs to get your attention. Some things, God allowed things to happen in the waiting season. Some might be negative things. But it's because he wants to take you farther than you will do it in your own. So during that time, he will provoke you to go and push harder. How many of us know what I'm talking about, church? It's in the waiting season. I believe that God wants to use our lives to make an impact in our church, in our city, and around the world. But it's a season where we, God, God is trying to take you deeper. That's what I love. I help pastor every single time. There is seasons we say, no, we're going to have prayer. And we're going to go deeper with God. Because it seems like nothing is happening. But I know that God wants to take us deeper. And not only God wants to take us deeper, but he wants to build you bigger. Some people here today, there is some people in the waiting season. And you might feel like, what's going on in my life? I'm going to let you know that it's just a season. That God wants to build you bigger, bigger, and bigger. We're talking about building a mega church. It has to be with a mega heart and big, big people. We need people that are going to be big in order for us to build bigger. Listen, church, this morning, lift up your hands to heaven. Lift up your hands. Truly believe, you know, this is hard time. This is our time. It's our time, church. It's our time. Oh, there is many people here, man, that they've been pain through time, through many years, you know, crying and weeping and believing in the promises of God, sacrificing and giving a lot. And it's our time. It's our time to see the harvest. It's our time for this church to go to another level but it's going to require for people to know how to wait upon the Lord and wait and wait upon the Lord and during the season to go deeper and allow God to build you bigger listen this morning the Bible says that those who wait upon the Lord you might get you might be tired waiting you might be getting tired maybe you're getting negative there is some things that you're saying that maybe, man, you feel like, man, why am I saying those things? Listen, this morning I want to open the altars. Listen, the Bible says that he will renew your strength. This morning I want you to come to the altars. The altars are open and come and spend time with God. And God will show you what he's doing in secret. And listen, when God shows you those things, you're going to know that God is not done. That God hasn't forgot about you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, you are a faithful God. You're a faithful God. Father, you're always on time. Father, you're always on time. God, you're always on time. tell God, God, take me deeper. God, take me deeper, Lord. Take me deeper. Take me deeper. Take me deeper, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. 
Jesus. Come on, church, let them tell them. Take it deeper, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Father, you're a big God. God, you're a faithful God. Father, you always on time. Your time is perfect. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to tell God, make me bigger, God. I want to be bigger. Make me bigger in this season, God. Make me bigger. I want to be big, God, and do great things for you, God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. promises God are you able God to help us to see those promises be fulfilled in our lives Father I pray God in the name of Jesus that you will strengthen our congregation Lord Father strengthen us Lord Father strengthen us God in this season God in seasons that maybe we might be going through the waiting seasons 
Father, I pray, God, that you would take us deeper, God. Father, take us deeper, God. Take us deeper, God. Father, that it will be a shift of mentality, God. Father, I pray, God, that you will build us bigger, God. God, build, God, inside of us a bigger heart. God, build inside of us a bigger mentality, God. Father, compassion, God, for the lost. Father, build us bigger, God. Father, help us not to give up or to quit, God. But you were, were says, God, let us not grow weary in doing good. For in due season, we will reap our harvest if we don't give up. Father, I pray this morning, God. I pray that you will strengthen families, God. Strengthen marriages, God. Strengthen, God, the young generation in our church, God. Father, the third wave generation, God. Strengthen us. Help us, God. Help us to respond, God, the correct way, God, in our waiting seasons. Help us to do the right thing, God, in those seasons that you have us in, Lord. Father, there's acceleration in our lives, but it will not be an acceleration without the waiting season, Lord. So I pray, God, Father, show us, God, that we are there where you want us to be. Help us, God, to understand the bigger picture. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, God. We know, God, that your Spirit ministers to people, God. I know this ministering to them in different ways based on where they are, God. But I pray, God, that your word, God, will be alive. That this word, that it will continue, God, that they will continue to minister to their hearts, to their minds, to their spirits, God. Father, we thank you for this morning, God. We thank you, God, that now we, we believe, God, that you're going to take us to another level. Father, we thank you for the waiting seasons. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I might just lift up your hands, church. Let the word be still in your heart this morning. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.